everyone, I'm retired meteorologist Pat Prokop, and today is Sunday, the first day of autumn, September 22nd at 10.44 this morning. Yeah, uh, the sun crossed the equator going southward on the way toward the Tropic of Capricorn. What does that mean for us? Not a whole lot. Still temperatures in the upper 80s, lower 90s for the next few days around here. But anyways, the nights are getting longer and the days are getting shorter. Meanwhile, the hurricane season is in full fling right now. We're just past a peak of the hurricane season, but that peak extends for several weeks, and that's where we are right now. And a lot of activity brewing in the tropical Atlantic Ocean and particularly in the Caribbean Sea. So, Let's take a look at the National Hurricane Center graphic, and it shows uh, some areas of concern out in the central portions of the tropical Atlantic Ocean, but more so in the uh, western and northwestern Caribbean Sea. There's an area here that is has the possibility of development over the next 48 hours at 40 percent, and then at uh, day three, four, uh, Wednesday, uh, Tuesday, and Wednesday, it has an 80 percent probability of a tropical depression or tropical storm forming in this area. It looks like it's a pretty good bet that 80% probability will take hold, particularly by Wednesday. And this system will be affecting us perhaps by Thursday, maybe even as early as Wednesday night. But Thursday looks a little rough across the southeast United States. So let's take a look at the satellite imagery first of all. It's still not showing that much organization uh, in the um, uh, system out here. It's just been sitting out there over the last several days in what we call this Central America gyro. And that's a circulation, a broad area of circulation uh, around the western and central Gulf or um, Caribbean Sea into the southern Gulf of Mexico. And uh, th this system is eventually going to break loose and it's going to start moving northward. And as it does, it's going to start moving into some very warm waters of the uh, Caribbean Sea and, of course, the Gulf of Mexico. Here's the computer models right now. And it shows the uh, system, this is the GFS, the Global Forecast System, or the American model, showing the system getting somewhat organized. And by uh, sunset on Tuesday, it looks like it has it already developing into a tropical depression, perhaps even a tropical storm, uh, right over here uh, in the Straits of Yucatan. And then it continues to move northward. And Compared to the uh, last several day model runs, it's now beginning to get more and more similar in its forecast tracks and bringing it up in toward uh, the extreme western portion of the Florida panhandle uh, in toward southern Alabama and then western Georgia. Now, here we are, are at um, uh, 2 o'clock Friday morning. This is 2 o'clock Friday morning. And uh, it has to storm over in southwestern Georgia and into extreme southeast Alabama, western Georgia. Puts us on the dirty side, us being southeast Georgia and southern South Carolina. That means we're on the side of this system here where you can see heavy rains and uh, tornadoes uh, that we associate with tropical systems and squalls that produce uh, very heavy rains in a brief period of time and brief periods of damaging winds. Uh, that's what's on the dirty side of the storm. And this is the GFS model. Let's go back just a little bit in time right here to uh, when the storm models are saying somewhat of a prediction of landfall. Uh, this way again, this is right here at sunset on Thursday. So going into Thursday night and Friday morning. Let's take a look at the uh, Canadian model, the CMC, it has it going a little bit faster, going a little bit further northward and not quite as strong. Backing it up in time, you can see it's not as organized as the GFS. As a matter of fact, it keeps it as a strong tropical storm, maybe a Category 1 hurricane as it makes landfall. But still, you know, tropical storms, uh, they can produce, you know, very damaging uh, weather conditions across the uh, circulation around the system, particularly on the eastern side of the system. And there we have it right over here uh, in the uh, eastern side of that storm lies southeastern Georgia and southern South Carolina, where most of my viewers are living right now, and some up into the North Carolina area, uh, the mountains of North Carolina. Yeah, it looks like some good, heavy rains and strong winds there, too. Anyway, let's take a look at the, uh, the icon or the German model. And uh, this is the new model run coming in. So this data is incomplete. So let's go with the earlier model. Uh, this was the morning run compared with the others. I have to bring it back up into time. There you can see it getting organized and coming to the north. And moving uh, toward the coast uh, around the same time as the, uh, well, about the GFS, about six hours 
uh, faster. Uh, this is now at, or actually slower. Uh, this is at uh, 2 o'clock Friday morning, and it shows a storm right in around the Big Bend area of the Apalachicola area of Florida, uh, the, the western side of the Florida uh, panhandle, and then moving north into extreme southwest Georgia, southeast Alabama. Again, the third model now puts us on the dirty side of the storm, the eastern side of the storm where you have the most severe weather conditions usually uh, with storms that come in from this side of the uh, uh, portion of the southeast United States. So what about the uh, ECMWF? I don't think it's here yet. It's running really late today. And that it just came in. <laughs> here we go. So let me take a look at this. Let me back it up. And it has the storm right over here uh, in that same location. So all four models now are putting the storm in the same location in the northeast east gulf of mexico now this one here is at two o'clock thursday afternoon so the ecmwf or the european center for medium range weather forecasting uh puts it into uh, actually a little bit further east it goes into southwestern georgia and then moves up into central georgia which again puts southeast georgia southeast south carolina on that dirty side of the storm the side of the storm you really don't want to be on and that's where the models now are indicating for Thursday night and through Friday, uh, looks like the uh, systems will be moving on past through our area. But the key here is uh, another feature. They're all showing the system to continue on moving, not parking itself like several other past storms, dumping very heavy rains. This one looks like it's going to keep on moving. So we'll keep an eye on that. Um, and let's see what else is. shows another storm developing out in the tropical Atlantic Ocean, but that one looks like it's going to curve off to the north. I'm going to take a look at that in a moment. Uh, I want to take a look at the precipitation forecast. Here's the GFS model, and this is as of uh, sunrise on Saturday. Total amount of rainfall uh, expected. And uh, coastal Georgia, South Carolina, according to the GFS, about two inches of rain, two and a half, maybe three inches of rain. Um, a little less in and around the Waycross area over toward Baxley and into Douglas. But farther west into uh, western Georgia and southeast Alabama and the, and the Florida uh, panhandle, very heavy rains. Uh, this golden area here, right here, that's about 12 to 14 inches of rain. That's a possibility predicted from the GFS model. And then uh, uh, this uh, bronze area here, that's about six to eight inches of rain in western Georgia. It goes all the way up into the Macon area and just to the uh, south southwest of Atlanta, going into Athens uh, in northeastern portions of Georgia. What about the uh, the Canadian model, it's going to show a little less rain as that storm a little bit further westward. So less rain for the coastal Georgia and South Carolina, but more rain for eastern Alabama and western Georgia. Again, 6 to 12 inches of rain possibility forecast from that. I don't think it's going to be quite that heavy, but still uh, keep an eye on that. These are what the model's projections are indicating. And the ICON model, uh, the German model, uh, again, well, here we go. i got to back it up because new data coming in. Uh, need to refresh this for the uh, complete data set that came in earlier this morning. And uh, it is showing, there we go, again, uh, some moderate rains in the greater Savannah area, southeast Georgia, Brunswick, uh, Jessup, Waycross, um, about, looks like around uh, three to four inches of rain, possibly five inches of rain, possibly. Very heavy rains in the northwestern Gulf of Mexico, but that's over water. Uh, as it moves on shore, it does weaken. All right, and the uh, the new model, the uh, ECMWF, let's see what the precipitation forecast is for that. And this is as, oh, let's go back to um, sunrise on Saturday, right there. And it shows much less rainfall across southeastern Georgia and southern South Carolina. Uh, well, not much less, but two inches, two to three inches of rain, possibly uh, one and a half to two and a half inches of rain. And over in the central portions of Georgia, a little bit heavier amounts, three to four inches of rain, possibly out of there uh, with that system. All right, let's move on. Uh, let's take a look at the uh, total tropical Atlantic Ocean right now. And there's our system right at the moment over here in the uh, Western Caribbean Sea. And we're seeing some waves off the coast of Africa and uh, over into uh, central portions of the Atlantic Ocean. Let's put this into motion. And uh, we can see the tropical waves. There's our system moving on shore, possibly most likely to become Helene uh, as it develops. And we're seeing other storms possibly developing over here in the eastern tropical Atlantic Ocean. Let's track those over time. And it the models have them 
progressing eastward, but then turns northward in the middle of the Atlantic Ocean, making them what we call a fish storm. And they will continue to uh, move northward. Another one moves uh, to the west, but then it too will curve off to the north and uh, looks like it's not going to be an issue either. But oh, look at this, another storm, according to the GFS model, forming in the uh, uh, Bay of Campeche in the southern Gulf of Mexico, right over here. And uh, it has it moving off to the north. But again, let's take this with a grain of salt because this is now a 384-hour forecast. And you know, as I said, that's 16 days, which you really don't go on uh, go beyond five days uh, actuality when you look at these forecasts. These are just trends potential where systems might start developing. Keep an eye on that, but I wouldn't hold my breath on that. Uh, over here, we're seeing the water temperature is very, very warm in the upper 20s and lower 30s Celsius. What is that? Uh, 30 degrees, I believe, is 85 degrees Celsius, 86. Uh, 31 is 88 degrees Fahrenheit. So, yeah, very, very warm waters right over where that storm is expected to go. So that's going to be tapping into this warm water, which is the fuel supply for a hurricane. And we got to keep that in mind. The higher, it's like gasoline, the higher the octane, the hotter the gas burns. And same thing with hurricanes the higher the water temperature, the more energy is available uh, for the storm to work with, as long as everything else is working in its favor. Uh, and we might see some wind shear start developing. Wind shear is a, a good way to slow down a hurricane or even to uh, uh, shunt a hurricane. And if we start seeing wind shear as it moves on shore, that will help cause the storm to uh, diminish more rapidly than otherwise. Uh, so we'll keep that in mind, but the water temperatures here are very, very warm. And last but not least, let's take a look at the satellite imagery. There it is again. We can see the activity in the eastern Caribbean Sea, South Central Caribbean Sea. Um, not really showing any signs of circulation. I, I see some wind shear still flowing across that area. You can see it flowing in this direction here. Uh, the wind shear, and that's going to keep it from developing. But once it starts moving northward out of that wind shear area, uh, then we'll start seeing the development of the storm itself. So uh, with that being said, the forecast, well, for the next few days, and today it was hot. I was outside for a little bit. It was hot in the uh, upper 80s and lower 90s. Same thing again for tomorrow, lower 90s perhaps, mostly sunny to fair to partly cloudy. Uh, around 90 degrees for the high on Tuesday. Then going into Wednesday, starting seeing increasing clouds and the winds will be picking up. Thursday and Friday, those are the questionable days. What's going to happen? Good question, but right now it looks like we're going to be seeing uh, rains, periods of heavy rain, squalls, strong gusty winds, possibility of tornadoes. Can't rule that out, so we have to keep an eye on that. One thing we really don't have to worry about in the southeast Georgia and southern South Carolina area with this system is the storm surge. We should not really need to worry about the storm surge. So, uh, and then Saturday we're going to start clearing out, but still a chance for showers. So keep an eye on the weather. Yeah, it's uh, definitely going to be active for this week, and it looks like for the beginning of October later on next week, we're going to start seeing more activity. And again, we're in that portion of the hurricane season where every day you got to keep a look at the tropic. My suggestion is what I do every morning. Of course, I'm a weathered geek, but uh, <laughs> I, I look at the National Hurricane Center Tropical Weather Outlook and see what's going on. And you can find that right on my webpage uh, going down into the tropical area and storm areas, so, uh, severe and tropical weather. There you can have the, uh, there's the um, hurricane wind scale, and there's the tropical weather outlook right there. And you just click on that. All right, so see you later.